Welcome back, Natasha. Ah, thanks, Seth. Congratulations on the show. It's really something special. Thank you. Thank For you. For those uh, who haven't seen it, the premise is you are a woman on her 36th birthday who yeah. keeps dying and yeah. then going back and reliving that birthday yeah. over and over again. Yeah, it's essentially um, a sort of a, an existential adventure show involving uh, multiple loops and deaths, and oh, it's hilarious. You're going to love it. <laughs> You're really gonna enjoy it. But it has been a show that yeah. I, uh, everyone I know has seen it. We like talking about it. We like trying to deconstruct it. Are you surprised that you made an existential adventure show, as you said, and people have been so drawn to it? I, I mean, I am. And, and in the first place, I would say I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm blown away. It's so, uh, uh, you know, definitively uh, personal to me that I, I, I'm, I'm very moved that it's connecting on this level. And yes, I definitely think it's a, a indicative of the troubling times we're in that it's connected for so many other people as well. Uh, it's uh, essentially a show that's um, saying, hey, we're all broken on the inside. Let's do it together. <laughs> Which so. is a really lovely message. Yeah. And I, I should say, because this is eight episodes on Netflix, and it's uh, the highest praise I can have for it is it starts great and ends better. Because I feel like there are shows where people say, you got to give it five episodes, and I yeah. want to say, I have a life. Um, yeah. Whereas this starts great, and then you can say to people, oh, stick around, because they know exactly where they're going. Yes. And because this isn't just this very personal autobiographical show that you helped create, there's also, there is like a science fiction element and a plotting element that you guys oh, yeah. took very seriously. This is like uh, a beautiful mind. There you go. There you go. This is fully from the writer's room of getting all the timelines And th straight. this is actually Michael Bricker, the wonderful production designer, who had a hell of a time. Uh, because what he's doing here is, you know, he's managing loops and timelines <laughs> and multiple deaths. Our poor script supervisor, uh, Melissa Yap. I mean, she came from Orange is the New Black. She's amazing. And this was an endless game. It was almost like... Uh, you know, Jodie Foster searching for Hannibal Lecter, only she didn't even know that she was looking for a cannibal at the time. I mean, it's a real, you know, uh, cross-sectioning scenario. And yet you yes. drew from, you know, your, this very personal place. Yes. And, you, and you drew from your life. And I've known you for a long time, yeah. and I've always, you know, we don't need to know each other well. We've known then each other a long know time. you I'm a big fan of Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. So, <laughs> yeah, yes. fair, but yes. I've always felt... And I feel like maybe other people feel this way, too. I always felt like I knew you better than I did because I feel as though you're a very open person. And mm -hmm. I feel like maybe that's one of the things people are responding to in the show is they can tell, oh, I've seen Natasha and things over the years and I've liked her, but this is the purest version of her I've ever seen on screen. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, uh, you know, just speaking uh, frankly, because I do know you. I mean, that's the sort of, like, heavy part to take in on, uh, you know, as somebody who's been working in this thing for a long time. You know, I started showbiz uh, back before anybody here was born, <laughs> including me. And, uh, and so it's, it's just so, you know, uh, heavy and, and uh, deep that, you know, it's something so personal is, is, is connecting in this way. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's a lot of connective tissue. We had such an incredible room and there's so many creators, your friend uh, Amy Poehler, of yeah. course, co-created this show and Leslie Headland, and we had uh, a great job. all female writers and, and directors on the show. So I think it was really, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so I, I, I do think it was also sort of a, kind of like a testament to what happens if you just, you know, try to uh, uh, avoid small talk like I do desperately in this life <laughs> and sort of aim to kind of tell your version of the truth, you know? You now, uh, I know how you feel about small talk. I would yes. assume because you made this very personal show, people feel uh, a comfort to come up and, and talk to you. And now they yes. probably want to talk to you about this show, which is great for you because that's not small talk and anymore. And yet, you know, the great relief is uh, I think I'm sort of like a Paul Giamatti type. Uh, is what, um, what does that mean? You know, what it means is like, you know, you see Paul Giamatti, you're thrilled, but you're not going to go up to him and be like, hey, American <laughs> Splendor was great. I mean, where does it go? It's like we all know. It's, but it's kind of like a New York character that's more like a, a, a garden gnome or a leprechaun, gotcha. a twin, a twin even. I see. I'm happy to kind of see you. I think I may be projecting an air of like, Hey, buddy, I might follow you home, so why don't you, <laughs> right? I, I, I'm not even doing it on purpose. I, guess, I just might yeah. follow you home, right. you know? No, so, I think there's something yeah. true about the quintessential, uh, quintessential yeah. New York celebrity that you, 
because they're so New York and the fact that they've stayed there for their career, they're, yeah. you, they don't... You begin, you begin is what it is, sir. <laughs> is you begin to blend into the pavement. You're like a, a series of ash piles on the <laughs> no. street. I they don't know what are like, you. Natasha Leone yeah. is so New York that because yeah. of her New Yorkness, she probably doesn't want a stranger to come up and ask for a selfie. Yeah, it'd be nice once in a while. <laughs> yeah, would it kill you? A little, hey, nice job, you know. Give me well, five bucks, whatever. I,